Welcome, I'm Felicia Brown, AARP's lead for entrepreneurship. I'm interviewing several women entrepreneurs to learn about their journey of becoming small business owners. They are sharing their story with hopes of being an inspiration and motivation to you. So today, I'm talking to Gwen Hurt of Shoe Crazy Wine and Bonita Johnson of the Vine Wine Club, both of, from Richmond, Virginia. They're two African-American women who are taking the wine industry by storm. We know that there are very few African-American winemakers and sellers in the United States and fewer African-American women. Let's start with Benita. Okay. Tell us, Benita, how you started the Vine Wine Club and what was your inspiration for doing all that? Wow, okay, so um, we're gonna back up a little bit. Sure. Um, back to 2005, I opened two wine and beer shops called Grapes and Barley in Richmond, and those were started out of necessity in the parts of town where they were, um, there were no wine shops. And so I felt like people wanted to learn about wine. People were kind of intimidated. You hear people who say, I only drink whatever the variety is, Chardonnay. And so I wanted to have the platform that gave people more exposure and in a place where they would be comfortable. I mean, who would be intimidated by a little girl like me? you know, <laughs> um, serving you wine. And so um, I started the shops there. And then as time went on, the industry started to change. And mm -hmm. so um, the Vine Wine Club was born in 2014, um, more focused on education, but also retailing online. Mm. Wow, okay, it's interesting. Yeah. So Gwen, tell us your story. Oh, I had gone out and I was traveling in Asia and other places and Europe and experiencing all kinds of wines to Benita's point. And I just kind of fell in love with it as, you know, drinking wine, and not necessarily <laughs> making it at that time. And then in 2013, I lost my job. I was downsized uh, from a company I'd spent about 15 years with. And two days after that, my daughter and I were in a car accident in Raleigh, North Carolina. And that kind of changed the dynamics of my life. You know, I had no ability to, uh, I could barely walk. I had, uh, you know, back brace and everything. And so instead of staying in my room and crying anymore, I cried and cried. Um, I kind of took my walker and walked out into my great room and yelled up to my daughter, we're going into the wine business. And she basically said, so how many drugs did they give you at the hospital? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I didn't get, you know. Um, and then she, then she said, you know what, Mom? You're as smart as any of those housewives that are on TV. They're oh. always starting businesses. You can do this. And I got your back. And so that was when Shoe Crazy Wine, the business, was born. Wow, that's amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. So ladies, in an industry that is male-dominated, and you know, and and, and fewer uh, men of color. Mm -hmm. How are you all seen as real players in this industry? For me, since I'm on the retail side, it's almost like a nurturer. You know, um, African American women, we have been nurturers throughout history, and so I'm introducing something that they may not be familiar with or comfortable with, and I'm I'm explaining it in layman's terms, you know, to make you appreciate it. So, you know, for as to, to be an African-American woman in this industry, it just means to find your niche. You know, there's mm -hmm. space for us, but sometimes we have to take a more untraditional approach. And what might that be? What kind of, what, what does that look like? Oh, we have to change all the time. So, for instance, I'm starting to do, I mentioned I do wine classes. Mm -hmm. So instead of traditionally sitting in a room all together with doing this class, I'm starting to do it online so I can reach other people and people can see my face and learn my personality. And you know, we sip and wine all over the place together. Wow. So, you know, that's just one aspect. The others are doing events, you know, bringing people together, celebrating specifically African Americans and wine even, um, letting people know that they're it's not just Gwen or me, there's others out here and we're making wine and we're not just making any old wine, we're <laughs> making quality wines. Mm. And so, you know, we can be competitive with other people once folks know about us. Great, great. Gwen, what would you say to that? Okay, from my vantage point, um, being in the production side and the distribution side, it's been tough 
it's been very tough and to be taken seriously when you don't own the vineyard mm -hmm. is also part of it. So I've got a few strikes, right? I'm a woman in this business. I don't own the vineyards, but I do own how my wines are created that go into my trademark label. And the other part is getting a distributor to distribute people of color's wine. I think um, I could probably stand in a room and call up everyone and say, how difficult was it for you to get a distributor to bring your wine to market? And 90% of them will say, very difficult to none. They didn't get any. Mm. I did not get a distributor. Um, so I had to put on my you know, pivot hat and say, okay, now what? I'm gonna become a distributor. So I actually distribute as well as help create the wines that go in these bottles. And when you walk into a retailer and you introduce yourself as, hi, I'm Gwen Hurt, I'm the owner of Shoe Crazy Wine, um, they kind of stop. You're not the sales rep. You're not the marketing person. No, I actually own the company. And I've had some egregious things said um, to me. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And one uh, in particular, and it was a major retailer, a representative from a major retailer, and he told me to get on my knees and beg and they would bring my product in. So I've had some really tough um, times. Um, I've had distributors throw my marketing materials at me and say, get out. Um, it is tough, and because you're not taken seriously, you get the, you're here today, you'll be gone tomorrow mm. type of uh, thing. We, we won't represent you because we know you won't be here in a year. And I'm here six years later, you know, and um, landed a contract with Walmart and, you know, we're, um, and Total Wine and Navy Exchanges, you know, we're in some major player Coast Guard. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. we sell our wines to some major retailers. And had I given up at any given time because I was told, you don't belong here, they didn't say it quite that succinctly, mm -hmm, but that's mm -hmm. what they're telling you. But when they, they close the door, yeah. Yeah. it means you don't belong you here. You don't belong here. When they throw your marketing materials on the floor and tell you to pick them up, and as broke as I was, and I needed <laughs> marketing material, right. I, I walked over them and I exited the door. I will never bend down and pick this up ever. You will have somebody pick that up, not me. So it's been that kind of tough on this side mm -hmm. of the, the uh, wine business. Your market placement. Uh, yes. Did you, what did you have to do to ensure that customers could, could kind of visibly yeah, see that you were out there? It's brutal. It's brutal when you're a brand that is not a national brand. It's, it's a fight for, for space. Um, we were always in the corner, in the cubby on the floor. And so Brittany's job, my daughter's job, was to go take pictures and post it on social media. Here's where you can find in the back, in the ah. booth, in the corner, in the dark. Ah. I mean, it was, it, and trying to move from that corner up to the bottom shelf and then, you know, up further. It's, it's, a, it's brutal. It's a brutal, brutal existence. Um, and I'm so glad you asked that question because not many people do. It's tough. And you know you have these huge national distributors um, that command, mm -hmm. you know, the majority of the space. Obviously, because they, they have, have the money to pay for it, right? Then they, they have brand, brand recognition. recognition, and so it, it's tough. And sometimes we go in, and I say, "Come on, we're selling enough wine to be at least up here," you know. Mm -hmm. And then you come back, and you're back in the, in the little cubby hole, and it's a dance, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and when the bigger the retailer, the more brutal, you know, and competitive it is for that space. And so you have to sell a lot for them to take notice. But how do you sell a lot? People have to see it. Right, 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 right. It's, it's like, like a, a little it's a, catch 22 it's a there. Catch 22. It's a, yeah, it's a catch 22. It's a constant going into the stores and making sure it's there, talking to the store managers and trying to build that rapport and that relationship. And it's also tough because we're a small distribution company as well. And our salespeople don't have the relationship that the bigger ones do. Mm. It's still a relationship-driven business. Mm. It, it, it really so it's is. not Would really. Would you agree with that? It's, oh, absolutely. It's really, so it's really not the number of years. And it's not your tenure necessarily. It's relationships. It's relationship. Definitely. It's still a relationship-driven business. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. We were talking about that a little earlier mm -hmm. today about the distribution. Mm -hmm. Even if. Um, African American wineries get picked up by distributors, the large distributors. There are times, and I know this personally as a retailer, that we call the distribution company to ask for the wines, and the salesperson may not even know that they're there because mm -hmm. they're in the back of a warehouse somewhere, mm -hmm. and so we have to ask for it. So um, 
One of the messages that I put out through the Vine Wine Club is to have people ask for the wine. For Wherever you go, when you go to a restaurant, you know, ask, have you had Shoe Crazy Wine? Have you had mm -hmm. Maison Noir? These mm -hmm. are African American brands because I feel like if we constantly ask for them, they will put them on the shelves. They will put them on restaurant mm -hmm. menus. But, you know, I think the consumers have to help us yeah, it has to be. get these brands yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. Is your pricing based on the fact that you're probably in fewer stores? You have a smaller distribution chain? Well, my pricing for my wine is, is in, the, in the retail sweet spot. That's okay. $9.99 to $13, dollars 13 dollars okay. My wine is priced competitively. That's why I said it took us a while to get there, but we're there. Mm -hmm. So your average person doesn't want to spend more than $9.99 on a bottle. And it's funny, when I was um, when I first started, my wines were $18.99 and $19.99 a bottle. And you would hear, oh, I'll get that for a birthday or for Christmas, yeah. right? And so I had, um, and this was one of the wine managers at a major supermarket chain. I don't want to give anybody <laughs> any extra press. But he said um, to me, do you want a fast nickel or a slow dime? Mm -hmm. What do you want for your business? And I said, I don't know a slow dime. He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you want a fast nickel. <laughs> but I would well, imagine answer. if you, someone asked me if I want a fast nickel, that oh, means that you want something quick. Quick, right. You want to make fast money. Right. As opposed to really get, putting it's out so a, a quality right. product. Exactly. So I'm thinking. But I guess I you want, gotta eat today I though. Want, right, yeah, right. You know. <laughs> this low dime because yeah. you know, it's gonna, you know, but no he's like no you want the fast nickel you want wine that's going to sell between $8.99 and $12.99 that's it full stop okay and that's where you need to get your product to and he says and I've been in this business 25 years and I've seen them come and I've seen them go and the ones that go the fastest are the $19.99 and $20 bottles of wine the ones that are under $10 or between $8.99 and $12.99 Maintain and longevity. Huh. So you want long money, you don't want short money. On the outside looking in, it looks glamorous because, <laughs> you know, as girls, we like to have wine. Mm -hmm. You know, well, let's get together, have some wine, spill some tea. Mm -hmm. um, and then you. Throw you some shade. And, and throw some shade. <laughs> and you see these, you see wine, you like. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't mind being a wine owner or being mm -hmm. in the wine business. Mm -hmm. What do you say? to someone who might say that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks glamorous on the outside, it does. But there are many days that I'm sure you feel the same yeah. way. We get home, we're done with this day, we pour a glass of wine and we wake up the next morning and it's still sitting there because it's hard work. It's hard work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Still on your night table. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still there in the morning. So um, it's fun. I've met great people because oh, yeah. you know we make great people, great friends over wine, but at the end of the day, you know, she's got to make the wine. She has to get it to everybody. I have to try and sell it to consumers, mm -hmm. you know, and so we see it. We it, have both ends of the We spectrum. have to love it to yeah. do it. Yeah. It can't be your side gig, and I tell people, if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, it can't be your side gig, mm -hmm. because if you want to get into big box retailers, you, that's a full-time job. It mm -hmm. takes, that's a two and a half to five year sales cycle. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've got to be in it to win it. Wow. Um, but if you are, you know, it's, it's great. It's great. It's, it's no greater feeling than to go into a retail shop. I still get giddy when I see my wine on the shelves, and I still take pictures. <laughs> and and I take pictures of her wine on shops <laughs> yeah. and text it to her. <laughs> because, you, because you think of this journey that yeah. you've been on. Yeah. You think about the no's, all the yeah. no's, no's. Oh. that you receive. So the yes is still so And so, so when that, good. even if it's that, that one small yes, mm -hmm. You know that it's not on the floor, right? It's on the shelf, shelf. with signage and everything. With signage, you yes. like that's a win. And the red blend yes. section, or yes. you're in the sweet red section, or California and that you have a section. variety, variety of them. That you can yeah. speak to all pa mm -hmm. wine palettes. Yes. yes, absolutely. That's amazing. So what's yeah. what's next for you, ladies? Wow, for me, I want to keep um, advocating. I, I, want to keep talking to consumers to get them to know. There's still people who don't even know that African Americans are making wine. So I still want to get that message out there and get them to buy these awesome wines that we're selling. And me? Um, I am going to be the first, to my knowledge, I have not been able to find another mm -hmm. black-owned adult wine beverage company, billion-dollar company in this country. So, Isn't ladies, nice? this is this has been amazing. Is, is there yes. any final words you want to leave with 
with our audience around, you know, just being in business. Yeah. Just keep doing it. And, you know, women are growing in this business industry. Just keep doing it. Just keep bringing our creative energies to the table and um, keep inspiring one another. Yeah, I'd say the future is female. Future. And the future is female over 50. Woo, woo. woo. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, hopefully you were inspired by Gwen and Bonita's stories. Thank you, ladies, for thank sharing, you. and thank you for watching. I hope you will tune in for our next episode of How She Did It.